now Democratic Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia. It's good to have you on the show. Let's Great talk to be about back. what's at stake in Virginia tonight. Well, look, there's there's state stakes and there's national stakes. So as Steve was saying, split houses. Um, if, if if Governor Young can wins both houses, it's a good night for him. If we maintain the status quo or Democrats take both houses, it's a good night for Democrats. And I've been out on the trail really schlepping all around the state for candidates. I feel pretty good about us holding on to the state Senate. And I also think we've got a real shot at winning the House. Don Scott, the Democratic leader in the House, is really bullish right now. Uh, but we'll see. And what's at stake for Virginians? All these issues, gun safety, uh, ease of voting, women's reproductive rights, minimum wage um, on the uh, on the, the row issue. Virginia is the only state in the South that basically still allows women to make their own decisions about terminating a pregnancy up to the through the second trimester. We're the only one. And the governor and Republicans have indicated that they will carve that back. The governor is pushing a 15 week abortion ban, but many of the legislators are proposing six week bans. Life begins at conception. And most people believe that Governor Youngkin will sign whatever bill gets to his desk, even if he's campaigning on 15 weeks. If a bill comes to his desk and it's six weeks or even even earlier, he'll sign that bill. So that's on the ballot. And then the other thing that's on the ballot in a big way important to me is voting rights. Virginia has a sad history of blocking people's access to vote. Only in recent years have we become a state where it's frankly convenient to vote. Um, but the Republicans would propose to roll that back if they get the trifecta that Governor Youngkin wants. And then we send the message nationally. I do think because Virginia is a battleground state, the, the Kentucky and Mississippi governor's races are really important, but nobody believes those states are going to be in play in 2024. But a Virginia that elected Joe Biden by 10 points and the next year elected Glenn Youngkin governor, it's going to be in play next year. And so the performance in these races is probably Probably super um, good uh, data evidence about are Democrats running into a, a headwind, a crosswind, or do we have a tailwind? And so big, important races tonight. Senator Kane, good morning. Jonathan Lemire, good to see hey, you. Certainly a lot, of, a lot of eyes on Virginia tonight with the election, but I also want to turn you to the latest from the Middle East. Uh, we yeah. know the president has been pushing uh, the Israeli prime minister for some sort of ceasefire, tempor temporary pauses, I should say, yep. uh, in order to, to for humanitarian aid to reach and, ref and uh, injured civilians to get out of, of the battle zone. You joined a lot of your Democratic colleagues calling for the same. Uh, give us what you think would be appropriate, because there's been a lot of debate. We heard from Prime Minister Netanyahu last night maybe suggest he'd be willing to do an hour pause here, an hour pause there. Would that be sufficient? What do you think is needed right now? Well, it, it's got to be more than an hour or two. Um, and we've had intense discussions with the Israelis. I was with the Israeli ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Herzog, last week. And I basically said this to him. Um, Israel has a right and an obligation to defend itself against Hamas. But what the world is watching right now is whether you're defending against Hamas or whether you're perpetrating a war against Palestinians or Gazans generally. Most in Gaza are under the thumb of Hamas. They're victimized by Hamas. They don't support Hamas. Um, and so there's no reason to just take these massive civilian casualties against people who are not Hamas supporters. And so here's what we need. We need Israel to target their military activity to make plain that they're going after Hamas, but not um, Gazan civilians. We need to give people the ability to easily get out of war zones if there's a need to go after Hamas mm -hmm. leadership. And we have to dramatically increase humanitarian aid into Gaza, especially the south of Gaza. If you tell people to move south to get out of the war zone, but then you choke off humanitarian aid, water, electricity, you only allow limited supplies in every day, you're basically putting people in a situation where they're going to start dying from cholera and hunger. And so, and that would be horrible. For Israel, it would likely bring more parties into this conflict, Hezbollah or the Houthis or Iran, and that would be disastrous for Israel. So we need to make sure that the military activities are targeted against Hamas, not, not Palestinians. Um, and we need to make sure that humanitarian aid really increases to stop suffering. Senator, let me uh, let me ask you a couple of quick questions about presidential. Well, just quick question about presidential yep. politics. Yep. Um, there were a spate of polls that came out, obviously, on Sunday. Um, 
uh, fear and loathing among Democrats in D.C. and across the nation. I'm wondering uh, how much do the how how much or how little do those polls mean if Democrats have a good night tonight? Um, yeah, good question, Joe. I want to have a good night tonight because I think it might quiet some worry down. Um, and look, I'm a little bit selfish about this. I'm on the ballot next year, too. So I'm looking at these polls. And, you know, what I what I believe is the Biden track record has been a very, very strong one in terms of job growth, manufacturing, you know, infrastructure. And we just got to do a better job of selling it. Um, I, I always get mad at Democrats because here's here's a problem with Democrats. When we campaign, um, we don't campaign with the economy as the front issue. We, we kind of cede the economy to Republicans and then we try to make it up on everything else. And sometimes we can. But in any race I've ever run from my city council races through the Senate, Senate. I always put the economy front and center because that's what voters are most concerned about. I'm going to do that in my race in 2024. You see Biden, you know, kind of laying the groundwork for doing that. And we really have to push it. And I think um, if we do that and we sell the accomplishments of the infrastructure bill or the manufacturing bill or salary increases or low unemployment rate, we will we will reel the voters back our way uh, before November 2024. All right, Democratic Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia, thank you so much for being on this morning. So we glad to. Thanks, it. guys.